Okay, so you need four pieces cut at three and a half inches across the whole 20. So across the whole 20, you're gonna need four pieces cut at three and a half, and I used a really long metal T-square and my long cutting board. This is a Scotch brand um, X-Acto knife with titanium blades. You don't need this one exactly, you just need something that's gonna be sharp. I use a cutting glove to protect my hand. And the way I do it is I press with one hand and I slice with the other. It's hard to do that on camera. And um, so there you are, cut all four pieces. And then when you get those four pieces, you're going to cut, let's say this was one of the pieces, it isn't, it's an off cut you would cut this one at four and a fourth. No, no, not four, 14 inches and a fourth, 14 and a fourth inches. And then your off cuts are what you're going to use. These will be the off cuts from the end of this and you will use that to make your spacers. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make the spacers. Okay, so this is how I get my spacers made. So these are off cuts from my long pieces. This was all at one time, one piece. And so now I have these leftover pieces and a size that I determined for my first cut and I marked it with a spacer. And now I line it up. This is a Tim Holtz product, this ruler, and I line it up, and I butt it up with another scrap piece so that my edge is flush. The ruler, which has a lip on it to catch the edge, is flush, and I can take that away, take that away, make a soft cut. Doesn't have to be hard because this uh, X-Acto knife thing is very sharp. About four passes is generally enough, but I turn it around and catch this piece up there. And voila. And so I cut three off of this one and I end up with the piece that's gonna go between the two racks. Okay, so now that we have all our pieces cut out, this for me, I cut them at 14 inches and I started with a piece that was 20 by 30. This is foam core that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And um, this is the spacing I've determined for myself. So what I'm going to do is glue the first piece. I can take actually the cutting glove off. And put some glue. Can't see, I hope. I'm gonna stand up so I you got, I can see. I'm gonna put a generous amount of glue on here because I'm storing paint and paint is heavy. So I put the first piece down approximately in the center. I'm not anal about that. If you are, you can measure it. And I put it in, in place. And then I take one of the racks, have it at the ready, because I'm going to need to glue it up, use it to space what I'm doing. Again, a generous amount of glue, especially along the edges and in the middle. And I place it down. And then I, after I get it placed down, I use my rack to adjust that groove. And I have to hold it from both sides and give it a squeeze. And you wanna kinda have, make sure it's vertical so that it cannot uh, shift and then pull it out. Have it at the ready, cause you're gonna do it again. Lots of glue. And 
and place it down. Get your rack. And it shifted. Sorry, it hit the um, it hit the camera. You got a little wiggle room time with this glue. And so that's also a good thing. I like to squeeze it in a little further. Then the rack will really be held in place. So after you do this one, you do the other three sides. Okay, so I let the glue set up for a while so that these are not quite dry, but they're a lot more stable than they would be if you went right away. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure I stay on camera. So I take the first one and I center it in between the grooves. If you notice, actually I want to work this way. There's a right way and a wrong way. The one that's even with the edge is the front, or actually it ends up being the back. So I pop down my thing, and I pop down the one in the front. They're wobbly now, but now we're going to, this is the back, match it to the back, come to the side, and pop it in, pop them in. And of course this was much easier off camera. They're in slide it down so that they meet on the end. That's kind of like my dry fit thing. For some reason, these are shorter. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I have to cut them all over. Oh my goodness. Okay, I figured out what I did wrong. The end pieces are supposed to be 14 and a half long, which is okay because it still is working. So then you add glue, you add glue where the things are touching and life's good. You put the last piece on. Can't see what I'm doing because it's the top. Slide it up. You would have glue and there you have a box. And then what I do is I cut a piece for the back because we need to have a back. And after I get the back on, I'm gonna use some duct tape to make sure everything stays together and doesn't come apart. Okay, so now that it's all, I put some tape on the corners because I wasn't able to glue because I miscut, but this, it still works. And what I want to do is turn it to where I have the spacers even with the side walls. And that's where I want to apply glue. I am only going to put a backing up. Ooh, so sorry for hitting the camera up this far because I'm slipping mine onto some pegboard so the hooks have to have a place to come through. If you are not putting yours on a pegboard, feel free to cover the whole back. I'm going to glue it up and then I'll be back. Okay, so here it is. This is what it looks like on the back. And I taped it all up and it is now ready 
to be filled up with paint or whatever. You can use it in this manner, flat on a surface and stack things in it, or my plan is to hang it with its other friends over there on my pegboard. As always, I'll leave you in the hands of the creator. Be blessed.